Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner's Spine Tutorial! In this series, we're going to go over everything you need to know to create a fully animated character in Esoteric Spine Animation software, like me! Before we start creating our character, I wanted to go over the interface to get you familiar with Spine's layout because it's a little bit different than other animation software. But if you're impatient like I am and you just want to hit the ground running, skip to the end for the recap and move on to the next video! Let's get started! When you first start Spine, a launcher window will pop up. Here, you can change the language preferences and the version you're using, which is handy if you're working with a client or a team with specific version requirements. You can always change these later in the settings menu, so if you don't want to see this every time, check the box below and click Start. Next, you'll be brought to a welcome screen. There's a lot of cool things here like tips and news. You can see your recent files in the window here, and Spine includes a bunch of example files for you to look at here. You can also create a new project or manually open a project in the browser. Let's create a new project. In the top left, you have the main Spine menu and icons to open a file, save a file, undo, redo, and return to the welcome screen. Clicking Spine will drop down a menu. Here, you can create, save, and open projects, create a new skeleton in your file, import an existing project into your current project, import art and data into your file, export your project, and customize settings in Spine. In the Spine settings, you can change the Spine version, choose whether or not the launch screen shows up, set where to find backup files and logs or customize your hotkeys, and adjust various other visual settings too. Turning Reuse Instance on will cause files opened in the File Explorer to open using an already running instance of Spine, while unchecking it allows you to open multiple Spine files at one time. I usually have this turned off. You can adjust more visual settings under the user interface, including setting the default timeline frame rate for new projects. 30 frames per second, or FPS, is the standard for most animation nowadays, but depending on your project, this could be the traditional 24 frames per second. You can change the look of your background, assets, and bones under the Viewport tab. The Behavior tab lets you change how often backup files are made, and most of your mouse controls are here too. I usually keep tooltips checked on because it's super helpful for reminders about what things are, and they usually show you the corresponding hotkeys too. By default, Spine has the viewport on the left and the tree view on the right. Select different views with the views dropdown. Minimize and maximize all active views at once using this button, or maximize them one by one by clicking on the icons. You can also click the menu icon to minimize or close a view, or right click the icon to minimize and double click it to close. Click and drag view tabs to rearrange the layout to your liking. You can nest views within other views, previewed in red, make new tabs, and drag the edges of the views to adjust their size. This is the setup I usually stick with, but sometimes I like to move windows around while I work, so my layout changes a lot. Play around with it and find a layout that works best for you. If you hide all of the views, you're left with just the viewport. This is where your character will be rigged and animated. You can pan around the viewport by holding the right mouse button and moving the mouse. Zoom in and out using the mouse wheel, or hold control and the right mouse button and move your mouse up and down. You can also use the slider on the lower left. The magnifying glass zooms to the actual size of the images, and the box adjusts the view to fit the size of the skeleton. At the top, we can toggle between setup mode and animate mode. Setup mode is where you will set up your character rig, and animate mode is, of course, where you will animate it. Notice that different views come available for each mode, which can be helpful in the beginning for keeping track of which mode you're in. At the bottom, there's a number of tools available for creating and moving your rig. The Rotate, Translate, Scale, and Shear tools allow you to manipulate the bones and attachments in the viewport, and you can set these numerically as well. Local, Parent, and World control the orientation of the manipulation tools, while the compensation tools allow you to rearrange bones and attachments without affecting others in the hierarchy. The create tool creates new bones, the pose tool moves these bones around, and the weights tool opens the weights viewer and lets you manipulate the weighting of meshes to bones. There are also options to toggle the visibility, selectability, and labels of bones, images, and others such as paths or bounding boxes. The auto key toggle is only used in animate mode, and toggling this on will cause keys to be made automatically at the playhead whenever the rig is moved. We'll go over these tools in more detail in later videos. The tree view is essential to using Spine. Here, you can see a hierarchy of all the nodes in your skeleton. 
At the top, there are different ways to filter your tree, including a search bar, the ability to filter bones, slots, and attachments, and a filter menu with even more options. The auto scroll button toggles whether or not the tree view will expand and scroll to a selection made in the viewport, while the find and replace tool lets you easily rename nodes in your tree. The minus and plus buttons expand and collapse selections, but this can also be done by just right-clicking a node in the hierarchy. You can toggle the visibility of different tree nodes by clicking the radio buttons on the left. In animate mode, clicking the key button sets a key for the node. Annotations to the right of the nodes show you if the node is influenced by a constraint, belongs to a skin, or other relationships. At the bottom of the tree hierarchy, you'll find folders for various things. Constraints, like IK constraints, transform constraints, and path constraints. Draw order, which is the order in which images are drawn, like layers in Photoshop. Skins, if your character changes outfits or if you have different variations of a character. Events, which are used by the game engine and can be keyed at specific times to do things like play audio or run code to calculate damage. Animations, which are all the different animations your character can do. Images, which points to the images folder in your project folder. And audio, which points to an audio folder and allows you to incorporate sound into your timeline. At the bottom of the tree is the properties panel. The options here change based on the nodes selected in the tree. We'll be using this area a lot when we start rigging our character. There's a lot more views in setup mode too. Weights and mesh tools are good for setting up mesh and weighting your images. Outline and preview mode are both good for navigating your viewport and previewing your animations. Skins lets you view multiple skins at the same time. Slot color makes it easier to change slot colors. And metrics shows you information about the complexity of your skeleton to help predict how the skeleton will perform at runtime. Since this is a beginner course, I'm not going to be covering all of these views in this series, but we will be going into the weights view when we do our character rig, and I use preview mode a lot when I'm animating. There's even more views available in animation mode. By default, Spine has the graph editor and the dope sheet as two tabs on the bottom. These views are where you're going to do most of your work creating frames for your animation. On the left, there's controls for playing your animation, skipping to keyframes, and looping your animation. The top bar here shows frame numbers and the playhead shows you which frame number you're currently on, which you can also see here where it says current frame. You can create a looping section by entering frame numbers into these boxes here and by having the loop animation button toggled on. You can use the scroll bar at the bottom to view different parts of the animation or right click and drag left and right in the view. You can click anywhere on the timeline and the playhead will jump to that frame. Drag the playhead around to scrub to a different frame, or use your hotkeys. Keys F and R move the playhead one frame to the left and right, while keys S and W move the playhead left and right to the next keyframe. You can zoom in and out using the slider on the bottom left, or by using your middle mouse wheel inside of the view. You can key many different properties in Spine by clicking its corresponding key icon. You can toggle Auto Key On to automatically create a key when a property is changed. When auto key is turned off, changing a property, like moving a bone, will need to be manually keyed using the key icon or else the frame will revert to its original position when the playhead is moved. There's more settings available too in these views that make animation easier, but we'll talk about those when we start animating. And that concludes our tour of Spine's interface. Hopefully this overview gives you a good foundation for the rest of the series. But if your head is spinning from that info dump, or if you just skip to the end because you're impatient like me, Here's a quick recap of the most important bits. Launch Spine. Click Start. Wow, cool tips and tricks from Spine. Ignore these and open a new or existing project. Use Spine menu to open, save, export, and import your art data. Change your settings. These are mine. Viewport is where you make your character. Check out the controls and hotkeys. Set up your character in setup mode and animate your character in animate mode. Easy. Fancy tools make your character. Create your skeleton with the create tool. Move it around with these tools. Make life easier by toggling visibility and selectability while you work. Trees are important and so is this view. See the relationship of bones to slots to attachments and everything else related to your rig here. Oh look, it's a family tree. Properties are controls specific to whatever you have selected. Watch it change. There's a lot more to do with the tree view than just basic skeleton rigging. See it all at the bottom. Lots of other views exist. Open new views, drag them around, make your own layout. The weights menu is super important if you don't want robots. We'll talk about him later. Animation mode has more views than setup. Create animation in the dope sheet and graph views. Dope sheet is easier to understand than graph view, so if you understand it already, you're smarter than me when I started. Move the playhead to move through your animation. There's also controls on the left. There's keys everywhere. Click them to make a keyframe. Never turn this off. And that's about it. If this has been helpful to you, or if there's anything I didn't cover here that you want to see more of, let me know in the comments below. 
Otherwise, join me in the next video where we start prepping and exporting our artwork. I'll see you there. Thank you.